So I went to this TCU alumni event uh, a year after I first graduated college. And I remember walking up uh, to the 13th story of this building and I walked in with my dad and there were a bunch of my peers there. And we were introducing ourselves. I was asking other people what they were kind of getting into. This is when I first entered the industry of training. And I remember telling people that I was a personal trainer, right? And I got all these looks from all these gussied up uh, TCU graduates. Um, and they kind of gave me this weird look. You know, I graduated, um, you know, from a very good business school. And why would I be doing something that, uh, and no offense to this, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, have maybe a high school education, right? Um, my point being is that there is this uh, social stigma attached to the word personal trainer, and that's something that I that's that's all, never really sat well with me is that word personal trainer. Um, I feel like what we're doing here is at the forefront of some of the biggest problems that we face uh, culturally and as a society. Um, you know, people are sick, people are depressed out of shape and I feel that you know a lot of these people who are coaches who are personal trainers are at the forefront of this movement of trying to really give some people some tangible tools to better themselves and so when people gave me that look uh, it, it just didn't sit, sit well with me so sitting here you know seven years later um, you know I've really tried to align my business in a way that really creates a lot of value and really moving away from this old stigma of personal trainer to more of a health coach uh, that's kind of what I want a lot to, uh, really what I want to focus this discussion on today, um, is people come to me looking for training, right? And that's really just a small aspect of what we do, is in order to maximize the results, is training is really uh, here, just kind of the charity on top of the cake. Uh, but we have to take a look at all these other things, you know, stress, sleep, nutrition, and if those things aren't really... Um, dialed in, it's going to be very, very difficult to, um, you know, get great results from our training. Um, and I'll kind of illustrate here a couple avatars that we see. Um, one I met with uh, earlier today. Uh, this is an individual who um, loves his work, right? It's an intellectually stimulating practice for him, um, but it creates a lot of stress, right? And what that boils down to is, you know, he's working these 12, 13 hour days, um, you know, he's working late into the evening, it starts to affect his sleep, right? When his sleep is affected, then he has even less will to focus on his, his nutrition. He's a lot easier to kind of grab for a bar or grab for some simple food, right? And then training becomes inconsistent at best, right? He's incomplete, um, he's not completely recovered, um, you know, and if he does work out, really it's tough to exert himself in higher intensity or high volume fashion, right? Uh, another individual that I work with is somebody who really has the perception that uh, although his life to me seems very stressful, um, he doesn't really bother him, right? He's just one of those people who kind of um, shakes things off his shoulders. Um, but his, his big issue is he's put so many things in his life. He's got a family of four. Um, he is working a new business, trying to go to a $25 million business within the first five years. And he feels like in order to do that, he has to maximize the hours in the day, right? And what, what many people don't know is you can actually put yourself into a state of insulin resistance with one poor night of sleep, right? So then that kind of, as you can see, kind of feeds up the train nutritionally, even if he's eating the best thing in the world, it's gonna get very, very, very difficult to get the results. And then he either is gonna have it or won't on some days, right, with this training. He's gonna to be too bent out of shape because of the lack of sleep, or he's not gonna be adequately fueled, right? So. When I have somebody who comes in for the first time, one of the first things I do is I draw this kind of hypothetical model, right? And it's not the best model in the world, right? It might be kind of more of gradients in between each of these levels. Um, but I think the concept still, um, still stands, right? That stress, sleep, and nutrition are really these salient topics of um, becoming a healthier individual, right? And if you're looking to really maximize your training is find a professional who's not just having you come in and do a workout, right? A workout is just come in, you sweat, and then you go on with the rest of the day, right? If you're really looking to make um, some improvements in your overall health, is you really have to tie in a holistic picture.